Today, Kevin Brown and Peter Diemer are going to discuss how to design and build a high-performance, high-flowing cylinder head with the capabilities of producing over 1,000 horsepower for a naturally aspirated engine. You will see how Kevin has developed and 3D printed a high-flowing performance head, and he will reveal some of the head design secrets typically found only in F1 IndyCar applications. Yeah, well, this was the, the part we 3D printed, and we actually you know, made it so we could put it on the flow bench, and we flowed it. It flowed 500 CFM at 700 lift, which is more than we can actually get out of what we have, so a little bit short but okay oh that's cool yeah, yeah there's your combustion yeah. chamber and... there's a combustion chamber and like I say these i got to move things this the intake valve is a little shrouded right here so we want to move it a little more to the center um maybe pull the exhaust off the wall about fifty thousandths and move the intake over about 150 and i hope like i say to unshroud it maybe go a little bit bigger with the valve um, see if we can't get the airflow so that at 600 we can get 500 CFM. So we see it on the We're going to try to actually, we're going to change the exhaust too. We're thinking that we're going to probably bring these together a little more and make them more like so maybe we could use some pro stock headers because um, they're already, <laughs> there's several designs of pro stock headers already out there and they work real well. So you designed and, this and then you 3D printed it. What program do you design in? I do everything with Bobcat. Bobcat? And then how long did it take a Bobcat? And how, how, how long did it take to 3D print something like that? Well, like I say, I, I spent about three days drawing it, and it probably took five days to 3D print it. <laughs> you know, it was okay. around 100 hours. Um, so then you put a little, little less guides in it, you put the valves like in it. Like I say, they're just, those are they're just, just mock press, up. You know, they're just aluminum guides that we made. Um, and these are the stock length of the uh, NASCAR valves these are uh, six millimeter intake seven millimeter exhaust and then i just put a plastic seat in there so i could do a valve job and the valve job is just a regular valve job on this a 30 60 45 um, if we're actually racing valve job we were going to probably steepen up the angles a little bit um, but that is just enough to, to give us a base idea of how it's going to flow so this flows great but you said there's more you're getting more flow than you actually can get with a lift. Is that what you're saying? No, we need a little more for the amount of lift we can get because we can. We only have a cam right now that will go about 600, and the, this actually flows at 700. So we need to get a little more flow, a little lower. So then, if this you get this optimally dialed in, what is the goal then after that? Is that well, is the idea is then, then we'll have send this to a pattern maker and have them make us um, make pat, uh, individual pieces out of aluminum like this and then the idea was we would weld them together and make our own head okay so, so it'd be with water jacks so you just have individual segments that you splice together or yes, whatever yeah okay that's pretty cool and then kind we'll of... have to install um, you know bolts for the uh, bolt holes and and put a water jacket on it. So would it be kind of similar to the Model A engine where you had the, the individual ones? Yeah, I'd but, like but say they, the idea is to get the cast so that I don't have to do all the ports individually and everything by hand. This will be... So you, if you had multiple segments and you wanted to build a V8, you would just build, build four and four, and if you want to do a 12, yeah. six and six type thing? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So this and, would be... Yeah, really and it, it's a big board. It's a four and a half inch board. Yeah. So we can build a 500 cubic inch V8, or we could build a 700 inch V12. Jeez. Because uh, we've had people, after they see all this stuff, they ask us, they want bigger engines. There's two guys that want big V12s. Next, Pete and Kevin will explain how to optimize the valve train for increased RPM and flow. And take some weight out of it. You know, the, the technology in the last 10 years has changed a lot. Yeah. yeah. With with six millimeter valve springs, you know the that Allison had a five eighths inch <laughs> valve spring, five okay. eighths of an inch, Stamp. a motor that turned two thousand twenty five three thousand. Yeah. They were sodium filled. Yeah, we're turning real fast, but we got half the tenth of the weight that that these other engines. Sure. You got a push rod engine. They got a five sixteen stem, big head on the valve, big rocker arm, big push rod, lifters, all that stuff. 
makes it hard to turn fast. But we've got the ability to turn it fast. If you turn it fast, you've got to shorten the stroke up. Or the yep. piston speed gets too fast. It's all geometry, really. Yeah. But it's it's also here. It's okay. like what we're doing with this. We've gone to the smaller um, seat valves, exhaust valves. We'd actually like to go a little smaller on the intake valves. It's just because we're trying to use existing heads, you can't do that. You know, I mean, it's it's really hard. This way here, if you look at the seat, we actually make a little venturi out of the exhaust seat to try to get the velocity going out the exhaust a little better. Yeah, the, that, that it, seat is very deep. Yeah, it's a very deep and it's made into And I see it's, like seat. you're saying, it's a venturi. So how did you do that? We is just it? ordered the seats from CET. And the seats are they're, real they're, deep. They're, they're um, seats are 700 yeah. thousandths long. And wow. there's a, a tail to the venturi on the backside. And then we will do like a radius top or uh, under seat cut and then you know, so I'm familiar with things. like stock production build engines, but I've never seen a valve seat that thick. So with a Venturi, I mean, yeah. I know this is, I might probably well, gonna get- a lot of money in seats here. <laughs> so what is the gain, what's the, what's the benefit of that? It gets real high velocity and more than adequate airflow. Um, and the other thing is it stops some of the uh, uh, low lift scavenging so that we don't lose our intake charge out the exhaust valve. So if I were to pull a NASCAR cylinder head apart, would I see that in their in their technology? Probably not. Probably not. Where would I see this? Is this Formula One type stuff? Well, <laughs> we made them smaller we, because the head was have, too big. We got a head from when they were trying to run these motors at Indy. In fact, that's the one head we have over there. That. Um, that they had done this when they tried to had to go down to the smaller displacement. And they started. When they with, went from four liter to three and a half liter. They shrunk some of them. They were experimenting with it. And we were really amazed at how much airflow for such a small. I and mean, we lost very little airflow on the top end by going to this small. I mean, that thing's going to be valve. three quarters of an inch thick. It's that it's way to make it smaller. Oh, it's very close. The whole reason was to make it smaller. Okay. You know, the air is going that way, so. Does that create, now this might be a, a I don't know if my question is gonna be a good question or not, but does that create more back pressure having a smaller? A little bit, yeah. And is that, not could that really. work in your advantage it's or more, no? It's more to get rid of the over scavenging. And define over scavenging, what, I mean. That's to, where some of your intake charge just blows out the exhaust. Okay. You know, you're making use of the inertia of the air and you wanna make sure it, it goes into the cylinder, not out the exhaust valve. And when, and you know, on a high RPM motor, you have open <coughs> where they're both open at the same time. You know, right as the exhaust the valve overlap. is closing and the intake valve and is opening. And that's where the scavenging happens? Yeah, well, that's where it'll, oh, yeah, you want to get some of it to suck the air in. You got to get enough air moving out your exhaust valve to help the inertia of the air coming in, but you don't want too much where it pulls some of the fresh charge, you know, out, yeah. out of it. It's, it's a balance game. It's pretty trick. It's a pretty trick balance game. And, and actually, <laughs> aspirated, it's, it's more critical than any other engine. Yeah, if you had a turbo on it, you widen out the, the center lines and, and uh, you know, you don't, don't worry you, about that. You can pump much. enough air in it. But yeah. we're natural, so we got to get everything just right. Now, this is the seat here. And what we did, like I say, this is the back side made a venturi out of it and this side here like I say it'll get a it'll get a radius an under seat radius and then the top angles can I can I hold it yeah so there's this head over so here there's the venturi the idea from. that's the venturi that is neat are those brilliant Kevin it's their own can I set it down yeah see this here this head was one that they had experimented with at when they were running at, at uh, I mean, at but that's only three eighths of an inch. But, no, but the rest, but the if you look is, at it, what oh, they see. did, see, they, they did this with two it's, pieces. It's got another insert. An aluminum piece that was separate from the seat. And it was a lot cheaper and faster for me to have them make this than to have to me to go in there and make an aluminum insert and then have it separate from the seat. This way, like I say, we got it done way faster 
lay less way less man hours okay so it's kind of hard to see it but, but you, you can, can see you the can insert see right there where this is the cylinder we cut off but where it went down to okay and you can see it's pretty close to what we did here yeah. and that's the same about 0.700 depth I, uh, I'm close to it up. oh that's okay I mean it's 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 interesting it's it's definitely done like you're saying you can it's the same concept right it just has an insert yeah yeah this is exactly 700 okay that is cool this is I don't know if this is no this is not part of this this is a different head well, that's cool so yeah I don't think you see that that often huh no you know. never I was that was a surprise to even see that one and then we float it and we're amazed at what it did so these are the little tricks and things that people don't see that they would do in Indy. We shrunk the engine. You know, Indy shrunk it a half a liter. They went from four liter to three and a half. Mm -hmm. And that's why they did some of this. They're pretty sharp back there. Yeah. Um, and then we just, because of Jeff, we figured a lot of this stuff out. Between Jeff and what we're picking up from different people, that's what helps. Yeah, well, it's nice, like say, you see some of the angles, like. One of the things that got me was some of those intake valves from the NASCAR are actually running 60 degree seats. Wow. Which I knew they'd gone to 50 and 55. I'd never seen them 60, but they're buying used parts and you can see some of that technology that, you know, who knows what they're doing now, but I know they've tried it at least at 60. So by buying these used parts, these NASCAR parts, these used formula yeah, he heads, yeah. that's really how you guys have kind of dissected these, reverse engineered their components, and then look at how they make these improvements and designs and then yeah. incorporate it into your own. Right? Yeah, who, who knows where they are today? We might be, you know, 10 years, 20 There's years. There's 20-year-old technology here. And we're just learning about it yesterday. Yeah. Don't tell but, them what they're doing now. It's 20-year-old technology, but you're you're getting records out there, right? And in, in, well, in classes that... Well, what NASCAR and Indy did today and last year is way above anything they're doing at Bonneville. Yeah. Everybody at Bonneville, most, everybody that wants to go fast at Bonneville puts a turbo. You know, it's easy horsepower. But you guys like a little more challenge, which well, is great. Well, we want to be challenged, and I like natural aspirated engine. Yeah, and it's yeah, different. And well, and then, and this, You're not just bolting on parts. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to and, put anyone else in a different category, but... I think a lot of people, like you just said, they just put turbo on it. Yeah. There's been nitrous well, on it. Well, that's, like say, we went to the PRI show, and that's everything. That's everything. But <laughs> what you're doing here is you're you're using a naturally aspirated engine. You are looking at, you know, improving the valve seats on the exhaust with using well, a, and, a Venturi and, in and it. And the other thing was, like say, because we know Tony, he has a lot of these available, so it's easier to... We would have we would never gotten this kind of stuff if it hadn't been for Tony. Tony just happened to get all this NASCAR or uh, Indy stuff. Yeah, uh, bunches of it. You know, he's got a yeah, he has truckloads, which is which is great because it's I you guys are the ones that are making use of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think I know he has it and it's sitting on a shelf, right? And it's cool to look at and it's well, cool. There's to talk probably about. tons of that stuff out there. Yeah, that people are just hoarding. You know, and you're putting it to use. Yeah. And uh, I know most people would would never. Cut a cylinder, a, a, a cylinder well, off the head, but we wanted to build a six liter. We could never do it with this head mm -hmm. as a V8. So we said, "Well, let's make a V12." You know, but mo nobody wants to go to Bonneville with a four liter. Mm -hmm. They're not going to go fast enough. Yeah, and nobody makes a big four valve engine. Well, Mercury Marine makes one. I've tried to get it. Um, I think that's about the only one, right? Yeah. The Corvette, the five seven Corvette. Okay. But we've got three of those, and they we don't like them that much. Well, they're not a race head. You know the the L the LT five stuff is. That is, was a Lotus head. Was right? a well, right. but it was a production car. Yeah. The combustion chambers aren't as good. The the angle of the ports aren't as good, and and so this was a race motor. It was made to go fast. So. Granted, it's 20-year-old technology, but it's way ahead of what's on the street today. Correct. 
Wow, that's neat. And we wanted six liters, so we accomplished by cutting a bunch of heads up. Finally, you're going to hear about Kevin's goal of making 1,300 horsepower out of a 500 cubic inch diameter naturally aspirated engine exclusively built for Bonneville. When you say more than adequate, are you happy with that? We're at the point where you don't need to redesign anymore, or are you well, cool with that design? Figuring out what kind of horsepower we need to go the speed we want to go, it should make more than enough to get the record. One of the goals is to try to go 400 miles an hour with a naturally aspirated big, big block, which we need about 1,100 horsepower to the wheels in order to do that. Um, and to do that without fuel and just on gasoline. So a naturally aspirated. Naturally aspirated on gasoline is going to be pretty difficult. So, well, like I say, we're going to need 1,100 to the wheels um, at the altitude we're going to be because Bonneville is, you know, 5,000 feet. Um, so that's, that's going to be difficult. And would this be a, an 8 or a 12? This would be, a, the idea is to be an 8. An 8, okay. Yeah. If it goes to a 12, it might be a little easier. <laughs> but, uh, but eight has, and how many cubic inches? Well, the limit is 500. There's an A motor. Okay. Yeah. So that so, that's a pretty competitive category yeah. too, isn't it? But you're going to have to make probably 1,300 to get 1,100 of the wheels. And then it's got to be at that altitude you got to make that. So... So are, is anyone else making 1,300 horsepower out of really a naturally aspirated? I don't know. In that? Out of a V8, I don't know. Okay. I know what the record is. The record, I believe, is one, 153. So, I'm no, sorry, not three, one, I'm sorry three, 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 353. 353. So, you know, we, like say, to go, go 400, you know, it's a fair amount. It's almost 47 miles an hour faster. I don't know if that's doable or not. Yeah. It's a goal. That's a good goal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. That's pretty cool, Kevin.